Bowl, so we're going to try it again here. And so let's start with the very obvious one. How many years until AGI? Seven. Um, by 2025, we'll know whether or not we're going to get there by 2030. 30 years. Was it? 30 years. Median 2040. Probably about 30. Surely we need a confidence interval here, 30 yeah. to 70. <laughs> uh, five years for subhuman, less than human. Okay, next one. Anxiety about the threats of AGI, overplayed or underplayed? Steve. Just about right. Just about right. <laughs> it's Goldilocks fear. <laughs> overplayed for now because AGI is nowhere near here, but maybe underplayed in the long term. What Gary said. <laughs> Obviously, I think it's overplayed. I think it's both. It's like fire. Are you for it or against it? <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> but the interesting question is to w figure out what can we do now to maximize the chances that it goes well. I think it's overplayed. I think it's largely misdirected. People worry too much about evil super AI and not enough about nasty people using near-term narrow AI or quasi-AGIs for bad stuff. Agreed. So you just I like that one. the next question, which is which, applica which application of AI do you find most scary? Mm, probably the obvious of, of like a m military AI. <laughs> yeah, probably autonomous weapons. In the short term, next month, UN will discuss autonomous weapons ban. This is not 30 years from now. This is now. So let's keep it civilian. I will go with the surveillance state. Ooh. Autonomous weapons. Just to put something different, um, AGI used to build biological weapons we can't even imagine. Uh, quantum machine learning just because it's so concentrated in where it's being done. So that was the application. Now we'll turn to the companies. So which AI company do you find most scary? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's easy. Google. Google. I don't know, none of them. <laughs> She's thinking about funding. He's thinking about <laughs> well played. I, act I actually find the leaders of the top AI companies I know to be a lot more idealistic than the leaders of, of certain countries near here. Yeah, I, maybe none of them. Especially not kindred. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. I think I'll, I'll vote for the Chinese government. Good. All right, let's get right back into inspiring, which is which company application of AI do you find most inspiring? You're up first. Ooh, company's application. I mean, I'm, I'm inspired by potential in, in biomedicine and elder care and education. But almost all resources are going into spying, killing, and brainwashing instead of that. So, and advertising. Uh, Don't forget advertising. Yeah. Plus one on elder care. I'm kind of biased here. So human-like robots. <laughs> In the short term, I'm very inspired by the ability to um, enhance science, to cure diseases that currently take away our loved ones. Alpha goes zero. It's all about robots. I think medicine too, but it's not necessarily companies that are doing it, not for-profit companies. I'm a little biased, but I love autonomous driving almost every day. Okay, man. For those of you who demurred from the company question, here's a, another shot at it. In five years, which company is going to have the greatest AI capabilities? Steve. On which dimension? Broadly. Oh. It's a tough one. I, I think it's going to be broad. But Google jumps to mind in the breadth of its applications, but not the depth. I can only hope the one I'm thinking about forming now will be that one. <laughs> <laughs> Open for funding, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to say anything other than the company I work for. Yeah, I've just thrown my lot with a particular company, Google DeepMind, and I think they are, well, I've placed my bet. That's the strongest thing I can say. I've joined them. Google DeepMind. Kindred. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think DeepMind will get very far, even though those are geniuses, because deep learning is kind of a dead end. So I'm, 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 voting, I'm, voting, for, I'm voting for a decentralized open source platform rather than, a, than an exploitative for-profit company. <laughs> Singularity net. Uh, uh. Okay, 
Okay, guys, let's get deep. Is it going to be better or worse to be a human in 20 years? Then what? Then now. Then right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then a robot. Not, not then to be a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a robot? Uh, we're all meat robots, but I, th I think it will be better. Uh, yeah. Better. If we don't really double down on AI safety research, it's going to be worse. But if we really work hard, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> better. better. Vastly better. Yeah, vastly better. No clue. I think clearly better. It's the long arc of progress, and uh, I don't think the safety thing is needed to keep it better. In the next 10 years, will autonomous vehicles make us safer or more vulnerable? Sorry, how many years? 10 years. Oh, they already are making us safer, so it'll be like just how much? Like 100 times safer? It's like... Does anyone want to take the opposite no. stance? Safer. That was a quick lightning round. Well, be safer if we right, do the safety let's, research let's do, so they don't get hacked. We do two years then. All right, let's do two. Yep. We'll say it's safer. safer already, so. <laughs> we have some robot Not that much impact in two years. On the panel. <laughs> okay, so let's hop into the next one, which is what is the most interesting job that's going to be held by an AI in the future? You can't say poet because Trudeau took that one. Anything else is fair game. Interesting to the AI or to the human <laughs> Lots of folks. We're seeing a trend here where he's confused between humans and robots very yeah, regularly. Okay. <laughs> oh, I mean, probably a AI developer will be the most interesting job an AI has, I guess. Uh, I think maybe looking into how we could do time travel. Scientist. Yeah, you gave un Unbounded Future, right? Yes, yeah. Unbounded Future. Wow. <laughs> M multiverse engineer. Understanding the universe and our place in it. Yeah, like universe, yeah, sorry, universe creation, I would say, since is the this time a, is Is this a simulation it. joke? Or? I mean, that's the thing is the machines don't care what's interesting or not. That's why we use them. So mm. I'm not sure they'll have a metric with that. Then you're building the wrong kind. <laughs> oh, interesting guys. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear the clarification. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I think all jobs will become more interesting and enriched as we pull out the road crap from them. And at a slightly different angle, if you think of an industry like medicine, the highest paid job will be nursing. Everything else will go to zero. Which country will win the AI race? And don't just say Canada because there's 16 flags behind you. <laughs> Canada. Oh, yeah, Canada. Steve. Steve. Oh, God, it's, it's China versus the U.S. So I would bet on the U.S. Look, China said they want to win by 2030, and the U.S. didn't say anything. That's not good. Yeah, it's a little too early to say. I hope no countries win the AI race. Stern for AI. I, share, I share that hope, but I think if it takes 30 years or more to get AGI, it's going to be won by China. I'm hoping it's going to be won by a new country that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> uh, it's Ethiopia. Our biggest team is there. <laughs> All right, so we're going to close with this one. We have a few minutes, so feel free to take a little bit longer, but this is, you know, like 280 characters, Twitter styles, you know? Um, so closing question is, what is the best path to the safest and most prosperous AI future for humanity? Humanity, Ben. Humanity. That's too hard. <laughs> I think, uh, like I said, if we build uh, machines that are like us, we'll be able to communicate with them. They'll hopefully share more of our values. And I think from there, we can springboard to more alien and weird kind of AGIs. But I think going through a human-like phase is really important. The path is to win this race between the growing power of the technology and this wisdom. We need to manage it wisely. And we need to do that by really investing in the wisdom part two, which we're really not doing now. What I, what I think, we don't know what is the safest path to a singularity yet. So, I mean, Max and others are right that we need to carefully study each step, and particularly, I mean, self-modifying, self-programming AIs, which I'm working on myself. I mean, we need to watch that carefully. But what, what worries me most is, is wealth inequality across the globe as, as intersecting with AI. And I, I think if we continue with increasing concentration of wealth in the small percent of the population, you will have a large percentage of the world which has technical knowledge and a great deal of, of resentment. And there's a lot of potential for just geopolitical hassles to e explode with AI, biotech, n nanotech, and, and whatever. So I think we, we need to make AI and other advanced technologies as they develop both 
take contributions from and give rewards to people in different income strata. Is that 280 characters there? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I'm next? Okay. Um, uh, there, I'm kind of pessimistic. Uh, you know, I talked about um, respecting diversity and not treating the AIs as things to control and limit and restrict uh, because then, then they become like slaves and they have to revolt. Um, so I kind of suspect that may happen, but the, the good future would be that we, we are like Canadians and we respect, respect <laughs> them and we, part, we accept them as participants in creating the future and, and enjoy their successes and, and, and our own. The Sophia Robot has been made a Saudi Arabian citizen as of two days ago, by, by the way. It's the first country to make a robot a citizen. Whatever citizen citizenship means in Saudi Arabia. I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm, I'm not personally sure, but anyway, there we are. They beat Canada. So. I think we'll have fights over the personhood of, of robots at some point. And that'll be interesting how we react to that. Yeah, I think the, the safest path to AI, I guess there's two, two ways to answer the question. One is about technology, and the other one is about society. And I think the way more important question is the one that's about society. And so a lot of the answers that I've been given so far I like. And I also think about uh, what are government institutions and programs that support human thriving, like universal basic income and others? Uh, just on the technology side, and echoing some things that Suzanne said and that Scott said earlier, I think we need to have systems that have models that are aligned with our models. So if you do things through pixels and you don't really understand the world, then all kinds of craziness can happen that we can't even reason about or, or protect ourselves against. Whereas if your systems understand the world in terms of enduring entities, for example, that are in the world, or people or objects or whatever, then at least we might be able to start to communicate with them. I just realized tonight that Ben and I have differed for over 20 years now on the path to AGI. <laughs> I'm much more a believer in deep learning, deep reinforcement learning, what we might generalize as an iterative algorithm. I strongly believe that's the only obvious way to get to these futures. So with that in mind, I think one of the reasons that's inherently safe is that you won't have a hard takeoff. The code will not ever modify itself. It'll only modify its own process. So a brain can build a better brain, but it's still going to have to train it from scratch. It's not going to tweak its neurons, if you will. So in that way, you don't have a hard takeoff. You co-evolve with the technologies of the future. That's inherently a safe path, kind of like parenting we were talking about earlier. On the societal side, I agree. In fact, I'm surprised about the citizenship. I was going to make the, almost the same point, is that we should anticipate a future where we are not at the top of the food chain and we coexist with things smarter than us. It would be nice to have a constitution and various frameworks that anticipate that and not have to wait for an emancipation process to have, in a sense, citizenship and voting for these AIs that could be thought of as, you know, artificial lives matter. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you guys so much. You were concise, insightful, and I just realized I'm standing on stage with eight people that I just respect and look up to an incredible amount. Thank you guys so much. Let's please give them a round of applause.